Praise be to Allah, we praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. May peace and blessings be upon His last messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No doubt that the most important act of worship in the believer's life is a salah, the prayer. Since it was the only act of worship which was ordained directly by Allah the Almighty to His Prophet وسلم, during the journey of Al-Mi'raj when the Prophet وسلم, ascended to heaven without any intermediary, unlike any other act of worship because of its significance and importance. Allah the Almighty in the beginning ordained 50 prayers to be offered during the day and the night. Then out of mercy, the number was reduced to be only five daily prayers. Yet, whoever offered the five daily prayers, they still preserve their word of offering 50 prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in a verse of Surah An-Nisa, number 103, a saying, This verse actually gives us two indications. The first one that as salah is being ordained upon the believers. It is one of the pillars of our religion. The second, that it is ordained upon the believers to be offered during certain appointed times. And that's why Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said in a very famous hadith, every Muslim knows, Bunya al-Islamu ala khams. Islam as a religion is built, constructed and based on five pillars. The first one is the oneness of Allah and to testify to the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his prophethood. And the second is offering the prayers. Then comes afterward paying the due zakah, the almsgiving, performing hajj, and of course observing fasting during the month of Ramadan. If we examine the five pillars of the deen, we notice that people who are poor, they don't have to pay zakah. As a matter of fact, they're eligible to receive the zakah fund. And of course, since they're poor, they are also exempted from going for hajj or umrah. And if they happen to be sick or old, then they are exempted too from fasting during Ramadan. So what remains for them from the five pillars of the deen? A shahada which every Muslim says, the only actual practical practice of ibadah is a salah. No Muslim is exempted from offering the prayers under any circumstances. Of course, except for women during their menses. Even while traveling, we still have to pray. While sick, we still have to pray. Not only that, prayer is prescribed even during war and on the battlefield. Because of its significance, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi once a very important question. He said, O Messenger of Allah, which deed is the dearest and the beloved, the most beloved to Allah the Almighty? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa answered him saying, 
offering the prayer on its due time. He said, then what? He said, Birrul walidain. To be good to your parents and to take care of them. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, then what, Ya Rasulullah? He said, to struggle for the cause of Allah. So there came number one offering the prayer on its time. Allah the Almighty says in verse 238 of Surah Al-Baqarah, <laughs> He's asking us and commanding us to safeguard strictly the prayers to offer them on time on regular basis and particularly the middle prayer as many of the interpreters of the Quran said that the middle prayer is Salatul Asr because many people tend to rest during this time and forget about it or delay it from its proper time then the next command وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ and stand before Allah to him قانتين. full submissiveness خاشعين. tranquil in your prayer long standing paying attention in your salah acquiring خشوع while standing before Allah the Almighty when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Al-Yaman to preach the people of Yemen, he said, Oh Mu'adh, you're going to meet people of the book. So inform them about the oneness of Allah. If they comply with that, then inform them that Allah has ordained upon them five daily prayers. Prayer is the most important activity and act of worship in the believer's life. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in a serious warning to those who abandon or ignore or sometimes delay the prayer from its proper time. That the covenant which is between us and them, the difference between the believers and the unbelievers is the prayer. Whoever abandons his prayer has disbelieved. فَقَدْ كَثَرْ This is indeed a serious warning. Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sound hadith, أَوَّلُ مَا يُحَاسَبُ بِهِ الْعَبِدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ الصَّلَاةِ The very first thing that the servant of Allah would be questioned about on Day of Judgment is الصَّلَاةِ If it was done properly and on time, then the servant on that day will be indeed successful. And otherwise, And if the servant abandoned his prayer, did not pray at all, did not perfect his prayer, did not pray on time, he will be a loser. May Allah protect us from loss. The prayer is a connection between the servant and Allah the Almighty. That's why the servant should enjoy his prayer. Should not take it as some sort of physical exercise. Not jumping jacks. Not some rituals. Rather, it is a beautiful act of worship. Since Allah the Almighty says, I have divided the prayer between me and my servant. And that word, the prayer refers to reciting Surah Al-Fatiha in Salah. And how is that? So whenever the servant recites, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of all that exists. Allah answers him back saying, My servant praised me. And whenever the servant recites, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the beneficent, the most merciful. Allah answers him saying, My servant exalted me. And whenever the servant recites, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah says, My servant glorified me. Then whenever you recite, 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين It is you and only you whom we worship and it is only you whom we seek his help Allah says that's between me and my servant and my servant should get what he's asking for then you're ready to ask you're ready to pray what could be better and superior to guidance the best request is to ask Allah for guidance so you say guide us to the straight path the path of those whom you bestowed your favor upon them not the path of those who gained your wrath nor those nor of those who went astray there is a dialogue between the person who's praying and Allah the Almighty the person the servant of Allah who's praying should enjoy his prayer and keep in mind that Allah is conversing with him dear viewers this program comes in response to massive requests from our dear viewers to produce a program or a show that explains exactly the importance of the prayer and how the Prophet ﷺ used to pray and how can one develop khushu and tranquil in his or her prayer we're trying our best to cover as much as we can in the next few episodes concerning the prayers, its rules and regulations, and how the Prophet ﷺ used to pray, and how can one gain khushu' and tranquility in their salah. So please stay tuned. May Allah accept from all of us. Thank you so much, and see you next time.